I hope you're all doing great. We're live here um, Saturday evening and I'm here live after a long time, after a long gap. I know last year after the COVID hit and we were staying home, I was doing this as a weekly ritual. I was coming every week, but then life has gotten busier and I wasn't able to come every week. But um, I thought this is the time for me to come back and talk about the most important topic. Um, today's topic is going to be more about heart health. Um, but any questions you have around heart health, um, any specific questions you have, um, I'll be giving you a brief introduction about how to look at it Ayurvedically. Um, and uh, after you have listened to it, you ha you can ask questions or if you can also ask any other um, questions that uh, are related to Ayurveda, that's fine. So, um, about heart health. When you like heart is, I mean, we cannot relate exactly Hridaya, which is an Ayurvedic way as heart, but uh, Hridaya is what is mentioned in Ayurveda. Rudroga is any problem that is for heart, right? So it is a muscle mass, right? This is mamsadhatu, that's what we call it. It's a muscle mass that is present. And essentially, there is a vascular function and there is also an electric function, right? So the vascular function is the movement must happen properly. You know, that the blood, the plasma, everything must be flowing properly from the atria to the ventricles, the arteries, the veins, the valves, all of them must be functioning properly. This is one function that needs to be happening. It's like the plumbing that is inside our house. The plumbing must happen to your, the water must come into your bathroom, it must come into your kitchen, it must come into all the areas that is required. And only if all the pipes are clean without any blockage is when this plumbing system works well. That's essentially the vascular system of the heart. And when you look at the electric function, there is the signals, the electric signals that are given, and that's where the rhythm happens because there is the pump that happens, the um, blood flows from one region to another region, and because of that pumping mechanism, for that pumping to happen, there must be an electrical impulse that is created. So this electrical mechanism is the second aspect of the heart. So when you have to look at it Ayurvedically, um, the vascular function where we're talking about the plumbing function must happen properly. When we have to look at what causes blockage, what causes that clogging. Recently, just yesterday, we had a clogging in our kitchen sink and there was a lot of... Uh, oil that they could find with the oil there was a lot of grease there was a lot of clog that they were able to find and they were all old pipes so it couldn't handle um, the drain was not working well and it clogged up and we couldn't use the sink at all until the plumber came and removed that clog so it's easy here that uh, mechanically he was able to go he was able to remove the clog and then it was flowing properly but when you analyze you have to analyze what really caused it right the type of obviously this is this is something that we already know like the type of food that we eat the amount of food that we eat the greasiness in the food the the heaviness in the food all of these are going to create this kind of clog that is very much known for a lot of us and uh, definitely a balance is needed and if the balance is not there, if you're eating and if it's not digested, it stays up and the plumbing is not functioning properly, right? So this is very much known for all of us and I don't have to talk too much about it. The second function where the electrical impulse happens and the rhythm, you know, heart beats about 100,000 times a day. It's working hard. So for it to work hard like that, for it to beat like that properly, and, and it has to beat exactly at the right time. It's, it's like that, um, you know, that music where it, if there is a cacophony, if there is an off note or off beat, then everything is going to go wrong. So that rhythm needs to be maintained. 
for that rhythm to be maintained, the function, the, the tool that is present in the body is called the Vata Dosha. That's what's called in Ayurveda. The, this Vata Dosha, I've spoken about it multiple times in the past also, it has the air element and it also has the space element. So we have to look at it in such a way that we have to maintain balance of this. Any imbalance of this Vata Dosha is going to create that change in rhythm. So like your uh, wiring, the electrical wiring in the house, there could be like that flip that happens one time and your bulb will go blip. So if that happens once in a while, you're like, mm, something odd. But if you call the electrician, the electrician will come and he'll chuck the wire and he'll be like, hmm, everything is okay. Because at that point it was okay. There was some point that the, the flick was not, the, it was not functioning well. So you have to check, okay, the flick happened once. Why did it happen? What is happening? Only you know, which means the body, in, you have the vata dosha inside you and only you will know. When you go to the doctor at that time, doctor is probably not able to figure out what's happening because he's not able to recreate that either flutter or any um, out of the normal rhythm that has happened at one point, right? So now let's understand what are the causative factors for this kind of flutter to happen in this electrical impulse. So the plumbing is working well, we're eating normally, we're eating in balance, but we're probably not taking care of the balance, which means exercise. If you're exercising, you're like, okay, oh my God, I know that my heart, my friend has suffered from a heart problem when he was in his 40s. I have to really take care of my health. What do I do? Maybe I should drink some bitter juices. And we start, we sometimes go crazy on taking bitter juices like karela juices or, you know, green juices, all of this because, oh, they're supposedly good for heart, right? You're doing that and on top of it, we're also exercising because exercise is supposedly good for heart. And we're also staying up late because our work is demanding us to work, stay, stay up late. So we do all of this. When we do all of this, there is that dryness that's created in the body because you're working really hard. You're exercising very much more than your capacity and you're also drinking green juices which are drying they anything that is not cooked and if it does not have oil in it then it is super dry then you're drying out as you're drying out then you don't have the proper balance at that time the electrical impulse is not also working properly that's when the blip happens that's when the out of rhythm can happen because it's beating 100,000 times per day, it requires that balance. There is this good quality mucus that is required, good quality, what we call kapha. That good quality kapha is required for the stability of something that's, that's working so hard every day. If that good quality mucus is dried out by this excessive doing, then heart cannot be in balance. It does not have that much of energy. It does not have that much of stability. Then we can definitely, most definitely see these kind of excessive heart palpitations because there is no stability. It is not now going like this and this. It's sometimes going like this because it's not knowing there's dryness, there's no stability. And it's sometimes going like this when you're probably sleeping and when there is a little bit of stability. So notice that maybe not overdoing. Exercise only according to your capacity. We normally do this, especially on the weekends and weather is super good outside. We do this um, hikes that are definitely are um, more than our capacity. Or we... Um, um, we go on these kind of fasts, juice fasts. So watch out for those, right? So that's one more thing I wanted to talk about. And 
one important thing is mentioned as Vega Dharana in Ayurveda, which is holding of your urges. When you hold urges, natural urges, like uh, urination or bowel movement or passing gas, these kind of natural urges that happen, it's like the air, it's the vata that is present in our body that helps release all of these, right? It's like a wave that's happening. When the wave is going on its own, if we stop it, because it's going out with that much force, when you stop it, when that downward movement, it has to come with equal and opposite force. It has to come up with equal and opposite force. Now, at that time, there is a possibility because it is having a lot of force, wind has the most powerful force. And it can now go and attack your weakest part of your body. And if that weak part is your heart, then that's going to be devastating. That's when, um, unfortunately, cardiac arrests or strokes can happen because heart is mentioned as one of the very, very powerful marma. There are three powerful marmas, which are called Sadhya Pranahara Marma in Ayurveda, which means if that spot, it's like a hidden spot where a lot of vital energy is stored. And if that particular spot is touched by any of these forceful vata, then there's going to be devastating results that can happen. So it's very, 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 very important not to hold on to your urges. I mean, if you do it once or twice, it's okay. But if it's a habit for you, then watch out for those habits. It can be very devastating. I mean, address it. If you're burping a lot, if there is a lot of holding of your urges, address those and correct them, but do not hold on to them. So that's, that's the very, very important thing I wanted to talk about, right? And uh, another important thing I also wanted to talk about is um, uh, heart is the place where we store all of our emotions. Um, manas is it's a seat uh, radaya is a seat for that so any of the emotions that we hold any of the negative emotions that we hold it it gets stored in your radaya in your heart region making it weak right like i mentioned earlier Yes, there are toxins that will be created in the body, maybe because of the food habits we have, maybe of the lifestyle habits we have. Any of these habits can create these kind of toxins. But if these toxins, if they go and they find a place to show their effect, and if that is the most vital part of your body, then that's devastating. How can you make it a weaker place? By holding on to your emotions. That's one thing that can make it much more weaker because it is thinking too much. There is either fear or there is anger or there is a lot of thinking, overthinking. There is anxiety, there is stress. All of these things that we continuously churn can go and take the seat of Radeya, which is your heart, making it vulnerable. Now, because it is vulnerable, any of the toxins that are created physically, because you're overeating or you're probably not sleeping well, these physically created toxins can react with your heart because now it is vulnerable and can create a reaction, which can be devastating. So be watchful of that also. Make sure that you do some kind of technique to release any of the stress, anxiety, fear, anger, any of these that you are holding on to. Make sure you address them instead of suppressing them. It's very, very important. You'll be doing yourself a huge favor. Yeah, so that's one more thing I wanted to talk about. Really, maintaining proper plumbing using good quality foods, maintaining proper electric system, making sure that the vata is flowing properly, 
and making sure that all of these fear, anxiety, stress are not being held on to will make sure that your heart is protected already. And as you can tell, this is the reason why there is a biggest burden of heart disease in the population these days. As you can tell, these are the three main conditions. These are the three main problems that we're dealing with as a generation. We over-exercise. We either take all of the protein powders, we over-exercise, we do more than our capacity. Increasing the vata that is in the body and that is affecting our the heart and heart is related linked to what is called a prana vahashrutas which is responsible for the breath to happen for the breath to happen normally now if that is affected that's when you see that breathlessness happens and you you are like okay until now i'm fine i was able to do things fine but as I was exercising more than my capacity, nowadays I'm noticing that my tissues are not strong anymore. I can see that there is more breathlessness. You'll be noticing all of that. So it's important that you know what your balance is, right? So that's really what I wanted to talk about. And another thing I also wanted to talk about is the strong detoxes that everybody is advocating about. These strong detoxes, if not done right, can be very, very devastating as well. You know, they pull out the toxins, you know, toxins and our body tissues, they're connected like this, right? But if you do a strong detox, you're like pulling these toxins. When you're pulling these toxins, it can scrape all the tissues. And because uh, Radeya heart is a very sensitive area, it, there is a possibility that some damage can be done in that area as well. So making sure that these strong, powerful detoxes are not done. In Ayurveda, there is a beautiful, beautiful process called Panchakarma where we soak. So there's this bond that is created between the toxins and the tissues. There is a soaking that is done with a good quality oil, with a good quality oil or ghee, which is required for removing this bond smoothly and slowly. Once the bond is removed, once we know that these are all separated, we are protecting these tissues with the oil layer and these toxins that are separated are gently removed. That is the way you must remove your toxins. But there are very, very strong detoxes that are being done as well, which are damaging our tissues, which are damaging the heart. So these are the main, main things that we need to look at. Again, one more thing to also pay attention to is the way that we're consuming our food, right? When you see food, how is it that your senses are all activated? How is it that you're, you're you know, you feel good when you, when you remember a good song, when you remember a good smell, you feel good, right? So like that, you must feel good when you're, when you're consuming food, when you're eating food that will also um, you know, give strength. It's like the subtle strength that you give to your heart. So all of these things when followed in balance will protect your heart. Um, really, that's what um, Ayurveda is all about, creating balance and um, maintaining good health. That's what it's all about. And if you have any questions for those of you watching, I would be happy to address um, I just don't want to bore you giving you a lecture about all of the intricacies in it. I just wanted to give you just a brief understanding in how to balance things and what is the importance of uh, not holding urges, what is the importance of eating good quality foods. And I don't want to bore you about what kind of foods. I've already spoken about it multiple times. Um, eating, I mean, giving good quality stability for heart is important right i was talking about how heart beats hundred thousand times a day and it requires stability but that stability must be given by good quality mucus if you're creating that stability with cheese you're like oh i'll create stability i'll give it cheese i'll give it yogurt i'll give it um, ice cream so these are all mucus i'm going to give it no unfortunately it's not going to work that way 
you have to give good quality mucus. Yes, Nikita, I'll talk about that right now. Good question. Um, so for increasing that good quality um, kapha, really, I mean, for lack of better words, I'm saying mucus, but it's actually uh, kapha. That is what needs to be created. Milk is a very, 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 very good um, kapha adding ingredient. And um, always get good quality milk get uh, A2 milk if that's possible, raw milk if possible, and always warm it. Never ever drink cold milk. Drink um, warm milk, boil and bring it to room temperature. Add a little bit of uh, dry ginger, consume that, and that's going to be a good quality kapha creating uh, food. And second thing is ghee. You know, there is this element called oja that is present in your heart. It's like, you know, um, bees go and grab the proper nectar. It's like the best nectar they can take from all the different flowers and create that honey. Just like that, the essence of all your tissues that are present in the body is all taken out and is collected and stored as oja. And that is stored in your heart. And that oja determines the energy, the valor, the vigor, the amount of uh, bubbliness that you have, the amount of liveliness that you have. All of that is because of that oja that is present in your heart. So for that to increase, like increases like. Just like that, ghee is the essence of milk. When you boil milk, there is a quality of fat that is created. And when you make it into yogurt, there's another qual another layer of fat that's created. Now you take out that fat and you churn it, there is another layer of, there's butter that's removed from that, uh, from that uh, buttermilk. And from that butter, you make ghee. So it's like the essence. If you get like a gallon of milk, you probably get only few ml of ghee which is the essence and this essential element called ghee can increase the good essence the good kapha good fat that is necessary for your heart to function properly and then always consuming um, warm foods never cold foods especially um, the smoothies that a lot of people want to drink like all of those different quality fruits, different amounts of fruits along with yogurt and along with the um, almond milk, all of that combined together to create a drink is actually not a good idea. It's not going to be good for your digestion. So always drinking or eating warm foods is necessary. So milk and ghee are actually the best ones that are uh, mentioned in the Samhitas and Nikita for your question. Um, but also uh, consuming good quality grains. Good quality grains are definitely rice, wheat are the good quality grains that are mentioned. And uh, uh, taking good quality pulses, which is mung dal, that is good quality. And with that, making sure that you're adding uh, uh, spices that are digestible. If you consume that and making sure that you follow all the rules of food consumption, eating only maximum three times a day, if not two times a day is good, maximum three times a day, maintaining that gap between each food, making sure that digestion is happening properly. If the digestion is happening properly, then that plumbing system, then that movement of nutrients will happen properly. So that's how you can create that good quality fat and thus good stability because a lot of times we're worried and, and confused you're like that's the most healthy person i have seen i wonder why they had a heart attack or i wonder why they're suffering from a heart problem look at it you will definitely see a causative factor which is a overdoing kind of a causative factor there is probably a stress kind of causative factor or there is probably over exercise that is happening or there is probably dry foods that they're consuming. These three things will definitely be there. So make sure that you tell your loved ones that it is not necessary. And especially I see this a lot of times when 
you go through any kind of a heart um, condition, a kind of uh, treatment that you go through for heart, it is very much recommended, oh, go on like a karela juice, just drink karela juice every morning or walk. You must walk every day. That's, uh, that's like a given for everybody. But if the problem is created because of excessive thinking, then walking is not going to help. You have to make sure that you, you give it enough rest, right? And if stress is there, then breath, making sure that you, uh, you uh, correct it with the breath, right? And in Ayurveda, there are other treatments. If, if the uh, drying is a problem, then there are treatments like uh, Ridbasti, where we build a wall on your heart region and we um, put oil there. We keep oil there so that that area is strengthened. So that's kind of a treatment that we do in Ayurveda as well. Um, yeah. So does even eating raw fruits increase vata? Is it recommended to consume fruits also cooked? Um, not necessary, Nikita. Actually, raw fruits does not increase vata at all. Um, unless they are very, very um, bitter. And I don't think we any of us would want to eat any bitter fruits. Yeah. I mean, essentially, bitter, astringent, are the uh, tastes bitter, astringent, um, are the tastes that actually increases vata, right? Um, fruits usually have a lot of kapha in them, a lot of uh, mucus in them. And that is why, it, especially eating early in the morning, because it is mucus outside, it is very, very wet outside, we don't want to increase the burden of mucus in the body. And that's why we don't suggest raw fruits so much in the morning but uh, no it's not necessary to cook it as long as you can eat it well if you're eating a fruit eat it at about 11 or 10 in the morning or you can eat it afternoon between 4 to 6 and you can happily enjoy the taste of it it's not necessary to cook it at all you can um, especially if there's a heart condition grapes are good uh, raisins are good or um, pomegranate pomegranate juice is very very good it's called riddhya and amla is also very good so these are the things that you can consume but uh, not necessary to cook unless um, digestion is hampered and you're not able to digest it well then um, sometimes they recommend that apples can be cooked and you can uh, spice them, you can put some cinnamon on it and consume it. That is one thing that can be done. Yeah, so um, that's about heart. I wanted to um, talk about if anyone has any questions, then uh, I'd be happy to answer any of those specific questions that you have. That's the real reason that I um, came out here today because uh, there is a lot of questions, there are a lot of questions that are being asked and I thought I'll just come out here and answer any questions that you have. Um, and it will be a good um, good thing for a lot of us to know because um, in the name of health, uh, we are eating all the salads and we are consuming smoothies thinking that it is healthy. We're uh, making an effort to do it, but uh, it's really not necessary eating cooked foods is definitely definitely a good idea and and making sure that foods are cooked with good quality fats which is my favorite ghee yeah so that's uh, that's it for today if um, nobody has any questions I'm glad for those of you who joined if you have any other questions you can always um, text them and uh, I'll be able to answer them. I hope you learned something new today. And um, as always, I hope I can join next time, next week. I'm not sure um, with the schedule. But if any of you have any topic that you want to um, understand about Ayurvedically, I'll be happy to talk about that topic as well. And with that, thank you so much. Thank you, Nikita, for joining. Thank you all. Alrighty. Bye-bye.